and welcome to Zoom View. I like Zoom View because we are bringing Tucson back from COVID and we're going to let people know that people are alive and well. And one person that is alive and well right now in Tucson, Arizona, and is really <laughs> being important to the COVID movement and Black Lives Movement, photographer Kathleen Dreyer. Thanks for joining us on Zoom View today. Thanks. Thanks, Tyler. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you very yeah. much for the opportunity. Boy, I love it when when this first started, you gave me a phone call and you, you said, can I come to your yard? I won't come into your house. I'll be very safe. And I want to photograph um, frontline workers for COVID. And um, I watched your techniques. You were excellent. You were safe. And you have, how many people have you photographed now? For the COVID, the frontline workers. For the Tucson frontline workers, 85 wow. since, since the end of March. Yeah, I think March 26 or so is the first portrait that I took. A lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah, and that's one project. <laughs> a lot of people. Well, and prior to COVID, you were like, um, and I heard you tell the story earlier, but you were a, a case manager, you were a social worker. You um, had a job, and then all of a sudden you decide to go into events and stuff like this, and then boom, COVID hits. You're out of work, and now you're doing something that's really showing people what's happening in 2020, uh, the first six months of 2020. Right, and, and oh. so it, it is not only showing people, but making it local, right? I mean, like right. with the pandemic, and with the social injustice and racism and police brutality and misuse of power and all of that, that's all here in Tucson. And whereas everything, we see a lot of things like with the pandemic, you know, for a long time, all of us were glued to our screen watching what was happening in New York. And, and I, I felt like in order to, um, to get people to understand that it's also here, we had to reflect what's going on here from our professionals that are here directly in town, right? And so, and it's the same thing with, um, with the Tucson Black Voices Project is to illuminate for people, like the issues going on are right here in our own town. And it's important for us to pay attention and uh, to what's going on and to see what we can do to help out. Yeah, and it's been, it's been incredible. I, I, I've loved some of the things that you have photographed. Um, and it was like with the COVID, the, the front, Tucson frontline workers, you have hit such a variety and exposing us to how many different types of frontline workers there really are during mm -hmm. this pandemic. I've seen you hit hospital staff. You've hit somebody like me who's a counselor. You hit a friend of mine who works in adult care living home. Um, mm -hmm. You've hit so many different aspects that I never realized how many frontline workers there really are. There are a lot of threads that are the fabric that make, that keeps Tucson held together, right? Yeah. And so um, with the Frontline Project, it, it, it had, its own momentum, you know, and where, I mean, I might contact a few people that I knew were frontline because being a former social worker, I do have a lot of connections of the frontline, but it really developed its own uh, momentum where people were reaching out because they were seeing the posts and seeing that they too could bring their voice to what is happening and how the pandemic was impacting their field, their families, and the line of work that they do, the people that they serve, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, and and it, it's a really um, heartfelt um, experiences. Like one woman you mentioned, um, you know, in terms of long-term care, one of the people that I photographed um, 
she is a place she places elders in retirement homes and assisted living homes and you know in her statement she said i never thought that i would have to attend a funeral virtually and be left to my own devices of sorrow and grief and it just you know it just broke my heart wide open to understand her experience um, and that's my hope with any any project that I work on, any photo series, that I'm opening, that people take the time to look at the image and look at the person's own words, not my yes. words. Yes, but I love that you do that, yeah. That's extremely intentional. It's extremely yeah. intentional uh, on my part to do Brilliant that. Brilliant on your part, too, I might add, so. Um, Kathleen, tell me about Black Lives Matter. That intense. I mean, when um, George Floyd was murdered and everything was happening and protests were erupting, there you were out there getting the photograph. Tell me about that and what inspired you to want to do that for a project. So um, when George Floyd was murdered, I attended one of the vigils. And it was at the Dunbar, and it was a very powerful, moving experience for me. It was uh, the people that attended was, uh, there was hundreds of people there. Most everybody was wearing a mask and following safety protocol. The speeches were very moving. At the end of the vigil, another group of people came up to the stage that weren't part of the vigil, and they were countering the words of the people from the vigil indicating that going the route of voting and trying to work within the system is not the way to go. And so they had a very different, there's more to say, but there was a very different viewpoint presented. And I had this kind of an epiphany moment that, and it's kind of embarrassing to say, right? But at that time I was like, wow, there's so many different voices within the black community about what's going on. And so it shows my own ignorance that that was sort of like a new concept to me. As a middle-aged woman, I was like, oh, there's a lot, you know. It, it, so it, like I have some shame that I had that level of ignorance, but I also am glad that I try to keep open to like being woke up, right? right. And so, so it occurred, somebody at the vigil had on the back of the shirt, ally is a verb, and that really, I, I took that home and I pondered it. And because I have a background as a social worker, I, I, I'm just kind of hardwired for social issues. And I have a soft spot for my heart kind of, um, I'm just aware of, uh, maybe more aware that, you know, of people's difficulty. Um, just, it's just always been kind of wired that way. So I thought about what could I do that utilize my platforms because I know a lot of people um, follow my work um, and so the idea came um, within a day or two of the vigil that I could do a similar portrait series that I've already been practicing for three months with the frontline workers. And so the idea is that I take portraits of black community members in Tucson um, following all the procedures for the pandemic, right? It's outside, I'm masked, I photograph from 10 feet away. Um, and that the person emails me a statement about any topic that they want to say sure. about being a black person. And my intention specifically is to wake up particularly white Tucson to the experience of our black community members, our brothers and sisters, okay. our fellow okay. human beings. And um, so that's how that project was birthed and launched It's just you know, like when you're an artist, right? And you know this as a musician, you're compelled to do something. Like something arises in you. You don't know where it comes from. There's a drive to create. There's a drive to do something in, in our respective crafts and our respective kind of orientation. So, you know, while I've left the social work field, I think I'll forever be a social worker sure. of some sure. sort. And, and so I approach all of, even my paid work, um, if and when that ever returns to me, <laughs> right? You know, like that, uh, that it is, um, you know, that it, it somehow serves something that's beyond me, right? right. That, that's 
something bigger than me. I'm just kind of um, an instrument. Like this, this instrument is wired to right now to take photographs of portraits to tell people stories. So Kathleen, when you get, if this pandemic ever gets over and if we can ever follow enough guidelines so that it can be over, and if you ever get paid again, <laughs> I say right. it jokingly, but I'm serious. Is, right. um, how could people contact you so they could hire you? Oh, thanks. I'm, I, I'm available for hire right now, just to yes, let you know. Yes, I'm right. telling you. <laughs> I this you know, like outdoors, outdoors, right? Um, yeah. So I have... Um, multiple pages on Facebook. I have my regular page, Kathleen Dreyer, my um, photography, Kathleen Dreyer Photography. Um, I have COVID-19 and Tucson Frontline Workers, and then Tucson Black Voices. So those are four pages that I have on Facebook. Okay. Um, my website, which is in transition right now, but the current, you can, either way, um, you can reach me at kathleendreyer.com. And uh, I have a LinkedIn page. I have three Instagram pages also. One that's uh, Kathleen Dreyer Photo, um, Tucson Black Voices, and Tucson Frontline Workers. Okay. So those are all ways to reach me. Okay, so um, this show is kept short and sweet, yep. but we want Tucson to know Kathleen Dreyer Photography is alive, it's well, she's for hire, she's safe, she is a frontline worker in her own way. So please contact her, and remember, Tucson businesses count right now. Kathleen, thank you. So thank much. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay. Take care. We'll talk Take to you care. later. You bet. Thank you. I'm a Southern Arizona I'm a Tucsonian